Throughout the Harry Potter books, there are so many important conversations, ones that introduce us to the Wizarding World, ones that set up the final journey for our hero, and even ones that explain the tragic childhood of one of the greatest wizards of all time. But there is one definitive conversation that is the most important and changes the series forever, and that is the conversation between Harry and Dumbledore at the end of the Order of the Phoenix. In this video, I'm going to explain why it's so important and how much of an impact it had on the series. Before we start, I make new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on to make sure you never miss a Movie Flame video. Now let's get started. This conversation takes place in the chapter called The Lost Prophecy, and the entire chapter is dedicated to just this conversation. It takes place right after the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, after Sirius Black's death, and after Voldemort possessed Harry before leaving. This scene was briefly touched upon in the film, but it in no way gives the whole picture, which is of course expected, you can't just have a conversation for 20 minutes of the movie. This conversation stands out, because this is where Harry is at his lowest point throughout the entire series. I think the only thing that could compete is the scene where he finds out that he has to sacrifice himself, but that's less of a low point and more of him accepting his destiny. To start the conversation, Harry is in anguish, and he literally says that he wants to end it all. Obviously, they can't say anything about suicide, but it's implied, and it really shows how much Harry has been through. He says he's had enough, seen enough, and he wants out, and he later said that if being human means feeling this much pain, he didn't want to be human anymore. He then proceeds to destroy Dumbledore's office, throwing things and smashing things, and we see how Harry has been pushed farther than he ever has before. He disrespects Dumbledore, a man who he always treated with respect and courtesy. This really pulls back the curtain and shows how messed up Harry really is. It's not often we see our hero break down like this, and Tim breaking down is totally warranted. He's been through so much over the past 5 years at Hogwarts, and honing in on that, everything that Harry's been through is the main topic of this conversation. Dumbledore tells Harry that it's finally time to tell him everything, and he reveals his plan, the plan that he set into place 15 years ago. I feel I have to mention that throughout the conversation, Dumbledore is extremely calm and not once does he raise his voice or even move from his chair. Meanwhile, Harry is on edge and angry for most of the conversation, making them polar opposites, and it makes the conversation that much more interesting, especially because Dumbledore's calmness makes Harry even more mad, and literally made Harry want to hurt him so Dumbledore could feel some tiny part of the horror that he was feeling inside of himself. As Dumbledore explained his plan to Harry, it answers so many questions we've had since the very first book, like why Voldemort tried to kill Harry, and why Harry survived the attack. We had some details on why Harry survived answered earlier in the series, but here we get a full explanation, and it leads right into step 1 of Dumbledore's plan. Because Lily sacrificed herself to save Harry, she provided a protection through the power of love that made the curse backfire and hit Voldemort instead. Dumbledore took this idea, and by keeping Harry with the same blood that his mother had, aka with Lily's sister Petunia, Lily's protection would live on. Dumbledore knew that this was important, because he knew that Voldemort would return again. But even more, he was worried that Voldemort's followers would come after Harry, and he realized just how right he was when weeks after taking Harry to the Dursleys, he found out about how the Longbottoms were tortured into madness by Death Eaters looking for their fallen master. Overall, step 1 of the plan was successful, however, Dumbledore knew he was condemning Harry to 10 dark and difficult years, but he did not expect the Dursleys to treat Harry as poorly as they did. But nevertheless, Harry arrived at Hogwarts alive and healthy, and step 1 worked. As their conversation went on, Dumbledore told Harry that step 2 of the plan did not go as smoothly as step 1. He did not expect Harry to come face to face with Voldemort as soon as he did, but luckily, Harry survived. And not only that, he delayed Voldemort's return and fought a man's fight, making Dumbledore very proud of him. This is where the plan had its first test, and the test lay right in the hands of Dumbledore himself. He wanted to be strong when he visited Harry in the hospital, but when Harry asked why Voldemort tried to kill him, Dumbledore could not find the courage to tell him, because with that answer came the very dark truth that he could not burden Harry with at such a young age. Though he knew he had to give the news to Harry one day, Dumbledore decided that it was too much for an 11 year old. Despite telling himself this however, he was upset with himself for not having the courage to do what had to be done to ensure that the plan stayed in place. Dumbledore got his second chance to tell Harry the following year, and it was becoming more and more important because Harry had now faced Voldemort three times, but Dumbledore once again let himself down and could not find the courage to tell Harry the awful truth. During their talk, he explained to Harry that it wasn't as though Harry had not proven himself worthy of the information, because he had, and he had gone above and beyond, proven himself time and time again, and he knew that Harry was ready for this burden, but he still couldn't tell him. 
When the following year hit, he once again did not have the courage to tell him, and Dumbledore now realized that there was a major flaw in his plan that he had not foreseen, that he had grown to care too much for Harry. He did not want to bring more struggle into the young boy's life as he had already had enough struggle for three lifetimes. He cared more for Harry's happiness than Harry knowing the truth. When the following year came around and Voldemort had come back to full strength, Dumbledore knew that this was it. It was now or never, but his love for Harry made him fail once again. During their talk, Dumbledore explained to Harry that he was ashamed of himself, putting the lives of so many at risk just to protect Harry's happiness. What did I care if numbers of nameless and faceless people and creatures were slaughtered in the vague future, if in the here and now you were alive and well and happy? I never dreamed that I would have such a person on my hands. Dumbledore explained to Harry that he had watched him struggle under more burdens than any student who had ever passed through this school, and he could not bring himself to add another, the greatest one of them all. And here is where the series changed forever. This one paragraph changes everything and proves how important this conversation is, because we as an audience and Harry learn about the prophecy. The prophecy tells us that neither can live while the other survives, meaning that one of them, Voldemort or Harry, is going to have to kill the other and no one else can finish the job for them. Leading up to this, Harry knew that Voldemort was after him, but he didn't think that he would have to be the one to take Voldemort down. He thought that Dumbledore, or the Ministry of Magic, or Aurors, or even the Order of the Phoenix could end his greatest enemy. But now, he knew that that burden lay in his hands. This was the burden that Dumbledore did not want to put in Harry's lap, because he knew that it would change Harry's life forever. The series had taken dark turns before this, and without a doubt, they got darker as the series progressed. But this conversation changed the tone of the series for good. From here on out, finishing the last few chapters of this book, all through the sixth book, and most of all through the seventh and final book, there is always this burden being held over Harry's head, and in turn, over the audience's head. I'm not coming back, Hermione. I've got to finish whatever Dumbledore started, and I don't know where that'll lead me. Harry is told that he has to kill someone when he's barely even used a serious curse. And it's not just anyone he has to kill, but one of the greatest wizards to ever live. A daunting task for a kid in his fifth year at Hogwarts. The prophecy coming out in this conversation not only changes the tone of the series, but it changes the way the world looks at Harry. Before this, Harry was dubbed the boy who lived, but now his title is changed to the chosen one. The world used to be fascinated by him, and some might have even pitied him, but now, the world was looking to him. He was their savior, their only hope. The conversation doesn't just affect Harry, however, it affects Dumbledore as well. It took all of his strength to tell Harry this, and just like Harry, Dumbledore is at a low point during the scene, and though it's not the lowest point in his life like Harry, it's definitely up there. He feels an insane amount of guilt for putting this burden on Harry, when all he wants is for Harry to be happy. On top of that, he blames himself for Sirius's death, as he kept him holed up in headquarters when he knew Sirius needed to get out. And he blamed himself for so much more, all stemming from him ignoring Harry for the past year, not even looking at him, as he thought he had to distance himself. But in reality, not letting Harry in led to so much more that could have been avoided, like Harry being led to the Department of Mysteries in the first place because he had Snape teach him Occlumency instead of himself, and in turn leading to many casualties, injuries, and so many more repercussions. And all of this, Dumbledore felt was his fault. Halfway through Harry and Dumbledore's talk, Dumbledore hides his face in his hands, ashamed of himself for all he had done, especially to Harry. And at the very end of the conversation, Dumbledore finally breaks down and cries. That alone should tell you how much of an impact this conversation had. These two characters have been through hell and back, and this conversation is life-changing for both of them. Dumbledore finally gets this huge burden of hiding the truth from Harry off his chest. He finally relayed the prophecy to him, but in doing so, he put twice as much weight on his shoulders, because now, he's worried about Harry taking on this burden by himself. Dumbledore was always careful and smart, but after this, now that he's told Harry what has to happen, he becomes reckless for his own life. Just weeks after this, he destroys his hand and then plans his own death for one year later. You must be the one to kill me, Severus. It is the only way. Dumbledore felt guilty for putting so much on Harry, and to fix this, he pushes himself harder than ever to keep Harry safe. He cuts his hand open without a second thought. You should have let me, sir. Oh, no, Harry. Your blood's much more precious than mine. And he drank poison that, for all he knew, could have killed him. Kill me! 
The guilt that Dumbledore felt after this conversation pushed him to dedicate his life to helping Harry in any way he could, hunting down the Horcruxes, leaving the school for weeks at a time despite the fact that he was the headmaster, and training Harry to help him as best he could. This scene is so important, especially for Harry and Dumbledore's characters. They bond over the fact that they both find themselves at very low points, and the fact that they both feel an insane amount of burden afterwards. Harry to defeat Voldemort, and Dumbledore to sacrifice everything to help Harry as best he could to complete this task. By the end of this conversation, Harry and Dumbledore are closer than they have ever been, and it brings the classic hero and mentor trope to a whole new level in the Potter series. This conversation changes everything, answers so many questions that go well beyond what I covered in this video, like the second half of the prophecy dealing with Neville, how Snape was involved in the prophecy, going deeper into Harry and Voldemort's connection, answering so many more questions there, explaining the power of love that is Harry's greatest strength over Voldemort, and so much more, but I'll save those ideas for future videos. All of this shows how much of an impact this talk has, and it is in my opinion the most important conversation in all seven of the Harry Potter books. Thank you so much for watching guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and see more of this little dude. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for Movie Flame updates. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured in the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you press that like button and subscribe. And look out for more great videos on the way.